let's optimize with Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. The Universal Render Pipeline is a pre-built, scriptable render pipeline made by Unity that will allow us to optimize our graphics for a wide range of platforms. So if we're targeting the Quest 2 or PC VR, it's kind of a match made in heaven. The Universal Render Pipeline has a lot of features, and I can't guarantee that I'll cover every single one of them in this video, but I will give you a short introduction of how we can include it into our projects and what settings might optimize your projects. If you'd like to see this roadmap, I will make sure to put it in the description below. So here we have a project that I have not updated to use the URP yet, and you'll see that it is 2021.3.af1. And I noticed on the Unity forums and a few other forums that they're saying that the 2022 version of Unity is actually giving us better GPU usage when you're using the Universal Render Pipeline. So you might want to consider that in the future. So let's add the URP to our project. And we're going to go to Window, Package Manager, and then we are just going to look it up, Universal. You'll see here, we got the Universal RP, which is the Render Pipeline. And we just hit Install. All right, and now that it is installed, you can actually install some samples here if you want to explore on your own and see what the URP has to offer, but we're not gonna do that right now. So now we've installed the Universal Render Pipeline, you might be saying, okay, we've done it. Well, guess what? Not quite. You see, we still have a few things we need to hook up to make sure that the Universal Pipeline's actually being used, because at this time, it's still using the standard pipeline that comes with Unity. And you can tell by going to Edit Project Settings, and if you go underground, you'll see here scriptable render pipeline settings set to none and we have nothing to set it to so let's create one really quickly so if we right click here and go to create go down to rendering and then urp asset with universal renderer and i'll just name this fistful of shrimp urp and you'll see it actually creates two different things for us now we're going to play with both these a little more when we're optimizing but i just want you to notice the relationship between this the universal renderer data and this which needs the renderer list, which is using the universal renderer data. So this is the universal renderer pipeline asset, and that's what we needed to hook into our settings. So if we go over to project settings, we see here that now we can drag this in here and we're gonna hit continue. And I turned the whole scene pink. Great, just what we wanted. Now, the reason that everything is pink is because the material shaders that all these objects are using currently aren't compatible with the universal render pipeline that we just put in. So to fix this, we have a few options. So one option we can do is go into the material itself and just change it manually. And you'll see the shader here, it says standard. If we go to universal and go to lit, you'll see that it has changed it to what it used to be. And since these all share the same material, it all changed. But doing a one-to-one -one like that is kind of annoying. Now we could do a bunch of them by finding our materials folder and and yeah, if we selected all of them, we can actually go up to edit, go down to rendering materials and convert selected built-in materials to URP. Proceed, and you'll see that that fixed that up too. But again, that's not too efficient. It would be nice if we could just bulk everything. And luckily they do have that functionality. To do that, we need to use the render pipeline converter, which is up here in window, rendering and then you'll see render pipeline converter. And what we need to do is it has on 2D here, we need to change this to built-in to URP, and we need to play with a few things here. And if you have a big project, I am going to warn you, this can take a long time. So you might have to be a little patient if you are using this method. So to finish this up, we just have to check all these boxes here and then hit initialize converters. Now, before I click Convert Assets and make all of this pink go away, I'm going to point out here, it's actually going to generate a few settings for us here, and that is going to be correlated with these project settings over in quality. And you'll notice that we have ultra very high. These are going to create a new settings for these specific pipelines for us to use. So with that in mind, I'm going to hit Convert Assets and show you what I mean. Boom, and there we are. Everything is set, everything is converted. Let's talk about the universal pipeline. We are officially using it now. Let me point out a few things that were done automatically when we use the converter. So if we type in pipeline here, you'll see that we actually created a whole bunch of new pipelines and also renderer datas, just kind of like what we did at the beginning. And these are already set up by Unity for us to use. And if you want, these are kind of default settings. So you have your 
low quality, medium, ultra, and high. And you can see these pipelines actually already automatically set up if we go to quality and you click through here, you can see that they have already been in place. Now these are nice to have as a default and starting off points depending on what you want to target. And they will have their own little settings over here that you can kind of get a feel of what Unity determines to be like ultra settings versus what they determine to be low settings. But let's customize one for the quest. So I'm gonna add a quality setting here and I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna call this quest two. So for the Quest 2 settings, I might as well check these off because it's going to be deploying to Android. And we want to make sure we're using the Fistful of Shrimp URP that I created. There we go. And then I'm going to come over to Graphics and I'm going to make sure I'm still using the correct one here as well. There. So what kind of things can I do to improve the quality for the quest? If I come over here, let's talk about rendering. Starting off, we have to always make trade-offs. That's what you always have to think of when we're optimizing with the universal render pipeline. Are we going to get high quality or are we going to get more performance? And it's always going to be a balancing act. So starting off, we have this rendering path either forward or deferred. And here, if we choose forward rendering, that's going to be the classic way of how things have been rendered and it will allow us to use multi-sample anti-aliasing which will smooth out these edges which is recommended by meta if we do deferred what that gives us is the ability to have a lot of dynamic lights so if i had these lights all moving around and casting shadows, then we might want to consider using deferred rendering. But the problem with that is then we can't use multi-sample anti-aliasing and that's just because of how the rendering techniques talk to the graphics cards and that's the trade-off there. So here I'm going to choose forward rendering because I prefer smooth edges over having a bunch of moving lights. And then uh, here we have transparent receive shadows that will just, when it's disabled, transparent objects will not receive shadows. And again, you have to ask yourself how realistic or important is this and I don't find it to be that important so I'm going to turn it off and I'm also going to turn off post processing and that's because post processing is extremely taxing on the CPU and GPU and if you can avoid it it is recommended. Next, let's mess with some of the settings over at the Universal Render Pipeline asset. And starting off, we have quality, we have HDR, that's high dynamic range. What that will do is it will create a greater contrast between our lights and colors. But if we have that active, it kind of messes with the anti-aliasing. So we are just going to go ahead and not mess with that. And for anti-aliasing, we are going to put it on four. And you know what, it should be changing in the scene, but for some reason, it's not and I found out if I click the main camera, it will actually do the anti-aliasing even though I haven't changed anything. So if someone can tell me why that is, please inform me. But you can see if I play with this a little more, if I turn it to eight, you'll see it gets even smoother. Uh, if I go down to two, it's not as smooth. And depending on your performance that you need, if you need to squeeze out a little more, you could try to get away with two, but four X is recommended by Meta. And next we have lighting and shadows. And sadly, that's where I'm going to have to stop for now because we are going to be getting into light mapping and that is enough for a whole different video. So for now, I hope that was a good introduction to the Universal Render Pipeline. Likes and subscribes are the best way to support me at this moment and I always appreciate your time. Take care. Bye-bye.